The terminology, the pelvic girdle, describes this full ring structure that encloses the organs of the pelvis, like the bladder, the reproductive organs, and the lower portion of the small and large intestines. We're gonna go through each of the components of the pelvic girdle, including the three bones that make up the large part of the pelvic girdle. And then that also connects to the sacrum. This large ring, this opening, this is called the pelvic inlet, and it is lined by what is called the pelvic brim. It's like the rim of a coffee cup. This large bone over here is called the ilium. It has a very large fossa or depression in which muscles will make an attachment in here. This is called the iliac fossa. The iliac crest is the top portion or the ridge. On the posterior side, of the ilium, we see a large notch. This is called the greater sciatic notch. So the sciatic nerve passes through here and down the back of the leg. The ilium connects to the ischium. This is the body of the ischium. The posterior portion is very bumpy. This is called the ischial tuberosity. The body of the ischium and the ramus. A ramus is a branch. The ilium and the ischium both attach to the pubis. The pubis body is right here. It has a superior ramus and an inferior ramus. The hole that is in between the pubis and the ischium is called the obturator foramen. This is covered by a membrane. This large deep depression is called the acetabulum. The body of the pubis connects with the body of the other pubis. In between, there is a joint called the pubic symphysis. There is a deep angle. This is called the subpubic angle because it's below the body of the pubis. The femur articulates with the pelvic girdle at the acetabulum. This creates a ball and socket joint. The head of the femur is also known as the epiphysis. The shaft is the diaphysis. The head of the femur has a small pit called the fovea capitis. Just below the head of the femur, there is a neck. This is considered the anatomical neck and the surgical neck. Laterally and posteriorly, there's a large bump. This is called the greater trochanter. This is an attachment site for muscles. Just below that is a smaller bump. This is the lesser trochanter, also an attachment site for muscles. Moving down the shaft to the distal end of the femur, there are condyles. Condyles are smooth surfaces which allow for the articulation of two bones. You have a medial condyle with a medial epicondyle, a lateral condyle with a lateral epicondyle. In between the two condyles is the intercondylar 
Fossa. The femur articulates with the tibia, and the patella is the sesamoid bone that covers the joint. The articulation site for the femur on the tibia is at the condyles, the medial condyle, and the lateral condyle. This is the inter condylar eminence. Moving down, there's a bump. This is called the tibial tuberosity. It's an attachment site for the patellar ligament. As we continue to move down the shaft, see another bump. This is the medial malleolus. You are more familiar with this as your ankle bone. On the lateral side, there's another one. It's part of the fibula. The fibula stabilizes the tibia on top of the talus of the foot. This is the lateral malleolus. The tibia articulates with the foot at the trochlear surface of the talus. It is held in place by its medial malleolus and by the fibula, the lateral malleolus. The bones of the foot include the talus with the trochlear surface, the calcaneus with the calcaneal tuberosity, the navicular, the medial cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform, lateral cuneiform, and the cuboid. These are the metatarsals. The toes consist of phalanges, distal and proximal, distal, middle, and proximal.